first, I want to bring in our team coverage with ABC News senior reporter Catherine Falders, as well as ABC News' Jay O'Brien, who is standing alongside Kevin McCarthy down there on the floor here in Milwaukee. Uh, what a sighting there, Jay O'Brien. Is, yeah, so Kena, this is former yeah, Speaker yes. Kevin McCarthy. You're live on ABC, Mr. Speaker. Live, ABC. So, yes, you are, sir. Give me your reaction to the J.D. Vance pick. I think it's a good pick. I mean, if you look at J.D.'s upbringing, he wasn't given anything. He, low economics, I mean, goes into Marines, writes a bestseller book, understands what has happened inside America on people being held back, especially in the Rust Belt, and then being able to move forward and talk to areas and show them the hope in the future. Do you think that there's a chance that they're too similar and moderates get turned off? No, not. How are you similar? He's 40 years younger. He's got a great opportunity to show different things as able to do, and I think it's be a great addition, especially the contrast with um, with what where Biden is with an open border, with inflation going forward. I mean, people really want to look to not only just have a strong leader, but someone that will represent them, someone they'll fight for them. And I think when you look at the um, Trump Vance ticket, it's much stronger than what we've had right now. And have you spoken to the former president since that incident on Saturday? Yeah, I talked to him yesterday. And um, in talking to the president, he was telling me about literally hearing the bullet by his ear and going through. And the president was still being the president, even though it was a life-threatening. And knowing that he was so just a small movement, he wouldn't be alive today. And his first concerns was about the individual who had got killed that day and those who got wounded. But then he was still the president saying, explaining to me that he learned from the doctor that there's a lot of blood in your ear. And you don't really know that. I didn't know that before. And then he would say, now, Kevin, you'll learn because you have big, beautiful ears, right? So you'll learn that one day. But um, no, he was still um, looking through there. And really what you're hearing from him, the word unite, He's really taking this moment in stride, understanding what it meant, right? He didn't run from it. He stood up to fight for the American public, and he wants to unite all Americans. Speaker, we're live also on NBC right now. Can I ask you quickly, we've heard a lot about change. The president's, former president's posture is going to change in the wake of this assassination attempt. What do you think that that change is going to look like? I think with the president, I don't think it's a change. I think it's always an improvement, right? You Learn from your experience. Think about if someone, a life-threatening experience like that, and someone actually lost their life there. He understands the value of it. And he picked himself up, where here's a, a sick person comes in, tries to destroy America. So, Kana, we're going to step out of this. going to fight for it. I think the thing you're hearing from the president, too, is also... No, we're going to come back in, Kana. We're going to keep listening. Right? How can I bring more people in and unite them from this experience at the same time? And I think those are the things you'll hear from You them. use the word tone. Do you think there'll be a policy shift in any way, in any type of policy? Obviously, immigration policy was very divisive during the administration. We've heard a lot about abortion during this campaign. Is there going to be any type of policy shift in order to unify the country? Or is it, did it, what did he say about what that means to him? I don't see how the president has to change his policies to unite. I mean. The president wouldn't be leading right now, and the current President Biden wouldn't be so such low approval rating if his policies were wanted. I mean, I think this is really good and healthy for America to have a debate on policy. Do you want your border wide open, or do you want a secure border? Do you want to curve inflation, or do you want inflation to still be rampant? Do you like the idea that Putin has invaded other countries, but the only time he didn't invade anywhere is when President Trump was in? Do you like the idea that you had five embassies that had to be evacuated under Biden and you didn't under Trump? Did you like the idea that North Korea is testing missiles again, but they didn't under President Trump? So I think that debate of policies was really what the country's looking Policy. for and less about personality. Th thank so, Kana, we're going to step away here. Kevin McCarthy will continue making his way around the floor. Uh, again, former Speaker Kevin McCarthy there, an ally of former President Trump's, walking us through a number of topics, but saying uh, that he spoke with the former president not long after that attempted assassination on Saturday, you heard the former speaker walk through the various things that they talk about and say, as we discussed at the beginning of that conversation, that he likes this pick of J.D. Vance as vice president and doesn't believe it's going to have any kind of issues in terms of attracting moderates, which is something that we've heard some Republicans express today. We certainly have. And wow, that was a really interesting moment here in Milwaukee and down, down there on the convention floor there, Jay, where you were able to catch up with the ousted speaker, uh, who in some ways it could be a symbol of the division in the Republican Party that we have seen. Uh, but here he is uh, on the floor of the convention talking about unity and talking about how Donald Trump will try to display unity and bring unity to this party.